see what happened to your webcam. You hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, you hearing me? Yeah, I, I can hear you. I, I was wondering, I was like, where is your deal? You know I know, I know. What happened? I what? I don't have a book, Ra. I don't have a book, so I, I don't want to be downstairs there, and I, I just left in the lurch, you know, so until I get my book, I can't, I, I got my webcam, but I, I didn't get my book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. I got to wait till I- miss you holding you hostage, huh? Huh? It's hard to read, We're it's hard to read that PDF, man, it really is, you know? All right, um, we're about to start. Um, can, can everybody, if y'all have a camera, y'all turn on your camera. Uh, we're gonna. Um, Sunshine's coming around um, in three more minutes. She says she's coming from work. Um, Mafra uh, called out. We already know that Bashir most likely will not be able to make it because of his schedule. And we got some new people. If they could, um, they could introduce themselves. If y'all uh, unmute your mic. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yeah, I, I can hear you. Did you guys hear? Me? Hi, my name is Aya. Aya, um, Aya is actually from Canada. No, I'm from Uganda oh, she, in Canada. She's from Uganda. <laughs> she just recently uh, moved to Alberta, Canada. Yeah. And I was and I was telling her that there are <laughs> some fellow Canadians. <laughs> Greetings. I'm sorry, I'm still running around the house trying to find my laptop. So that's why I'm not in video yet. But as soon okay. as I'm settled in, I will. <laughs> Yeah. Well, those of you from Canada, um, introduce yourself so like that she can have some um, to link up, even if y'all can exchange information on the chat privately. Because um, she's alone in Canada with her children, her family, and Alberta's way up there. Yeah, I know it's uh, way up yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone was just... wondering why I chose here. <laughs> I was. <laughs> when I looked at it in the map, she's like 36 hour drive from Toronto. <laughs> like, wow. Yeah, it's a long way. It's a long way. Yeah, well, our daughter was yeah. there last, uh, it's last year or two mm -hmm. years ago. Last mm -hmm. year, she was working in Alberta and she um, she left before COVID kicking big time and she came back to Toronto. So, yeah, she didn't want to get stuck out there, you know? Uh -huh. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> we understand. We understand because we know it's. So it's, it's where in, where Miami, in, are you able to get on the microphone? Okay. You um. I'm sorry. Chat. Um, Niyami is um is uh, another a new guest um brother from Texas. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, I mean, Peace everyone. I'm trying to get situated. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um um get get situated like, like that we could wait for sunshine. I mean she's a loyal um I think we could wait for her. Unless, Hello everybody. Unless, Hi Veronica. Hello. Hi, Veronica. Hello. Veronica here. <laughs> Miss Willa on Texas. Sorry, <laughs> Texas in the building. Texas in the building. There's two, there's two Texas, a bunch of Canadians. A bunch of Canadians. And me and my wife are the only ones from Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> only Connecticut. So we got we got then, Canada, um, we got Texas, we got um, Alberta, Al we got Alberta, Toronto, yeah. Alberta, Texas. Texas is a state, right? Yeah. And Connecticut, New Jersey. Okay, that's not bad. And should Uganda, we, should... and Trinidad, and Barbados. No, no, no. Yeah. no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Via. Try to kill Via. time. Kill time. <laughs> Dulcinea. 
I didn't recognize you because the last time you were face planted down towards I the know floor. I was and I, I was like oh, covered up in the blanket. So yeah, I was like, okay, this time I'll have it all. But now you, you now she look like, very now well. she look like she was a civilization. <laughs> Yeah. Last time she was like all cold, like ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't that recognize you. I said to my husband, is that a new person? He goes, no, no, I think she was the one that was lying down. I go, oh. <laughs> hmm. So everything gotten better in Texas? Yes, it has. It's gotten better. So it's back to normal. Okay. It's not any kind of coldness or anything. No snow. So it's back to our oh, normal. Um, very good. Okay, uh, I see one person came in and then they they left. I don't know what's going on. Let me see if I can hook them up on. Did Ted Cruz is he still yeah, in that position in, in in Texas or <laughs> Syria? Yeah, yeah oh. I think so. Yeah. No fallout. No fallout. <laughs> yeah, no fallout here. Yeah. <laughs> They're just like off. Oh. Us Texans are gonna be okay. <laughs> we'll work on it ourselves. Did you guys see that post? I don't know if he was like, I think he was um, just like, I don't know what kind of Texas official he was, but he was just pretty much like, you guys need to figure this out on your own. You shouldn't be leaning on the government for oh, anything. I yeah, I saw that. Yeah, wow. <laughs> like, oh, you came back? No, no, I was not oh. Ted Cruz. That was another guy. Oh, another guy. was okay. another guy, yeah. yeah. He was just like, yeah, sometimes. you guys need to be able to be self-sufficient. You shouldn't be needing us right now. You should figure it out. Figure out a way to keep your family warm. Figure out a way to feed your families. <laughs> wow. That's on you, not us. Like, wow. wow. Crazy. But you don't, need, you don't need that position then. You don't need him. Yeah, you don't. Position. Yeah. Exactly. You don't need to be a politician. Wow. Well, since there are new people here, I, I want to start from Ver Veronica. Um, introduce mm -hmm. yourself just briefly, and then we're going to go and do um, libations with Linda. Go ahead, Veronica. Right here. Um, okay. So my name is Veronica Sullivan, and um, <laughs> I am a teacher right now. I'm teaching grade one online, <laughs> one of a very difficult task. I'm also a children's program coordinator for ACHA, the African Canadian Heritage Association. And um, I'm also a history <laughs> teacher. So I love finding out about our history, our heritage. And um, I'm looking forward to actually um, taking a different role now and um, kind of making sure that I'm absorbing as much information that I need going forward, especially in this kind of time. And, um, and I'm teaching children, so I, I've got to be well grounded so that I can pass it on for the next generation. And, um, you know, I got to know how I'm coming at them. I got to know how to um, present things to them so that they get a sense of who they are. And um, we need it now to me, we, we always needed it, <laughs> but now I think more so than, than ever. <laughs> so I'm here and that, but yes, <laughs> it's a big task. It's momentous, but it is. Um, actually, we're gonna knock it out. We're gonna knock yeah, it out. It's yeah, like I, I'm, I'm going after it. So <laughs> we're gonna, yeah, with, with the intent of success <laughs> right down the line there, you know? Mm -hmm. The Buckus family, um, introduce yourself, please. Y'all mute it. Okay, so my name is Eugene Bacchus, Um and uh, we joined up the book club. We, we linked up with Ra a few months ago, and he, he, you know, worked with us on a project. And so once he launched his book club, you know, it sounded like something that you know myself and my wife would be interested in doing, and. So we, um, we live in Toronto, Canada. Um, we got two kids, big kids, one out of the house, one still in. <laughs> and um, yeah, it, it's, uh, I'm looking forward to doing this. It's, it's, one of my, it's my first book club in, in years. Um, so 
Yeah, you found that out last time. I haven't, I haven't read in a while, and he's got to be back into reading. So, hey, guys, I'm, yeah. I'm putting the pressure on him too. <laughs> got cobwebs in the back of the ears. I know, I know. There you go. <laughs> uh, you go so I'm his Mrs. wife. He referred to me as his wife. I'm his wife. My name's Lindis. And um, uh, so we, we also part of the African Canadian Heritage Association with Veronica. And I work with the young people ages 12 to 18. Um, I'm also a Yensumu Rites of Passage practitioner and my paid job is a physiotherapist working with people with brain injuries. So it sounds like it's three different aspects of my life, but they all meld together very nicely to make me who I am. So plus the, the marriage and the children and everything else. So, so I'm looking forward to this book. It's going to challenge me because some of the language is like, oh, you've got to have a dictionary right next to you for every second word. But that's OK. That's how we grow. And if we didn't challenge ourselves, we wouldn't grow. So this is a challenge. In a nice way. So thank you, Rob. Miss Wheeler. Hi, everyone. So my name is Dulcinea. I actually found out about the book club in the House of Consciousness. I was very interested in joining the book club because I haven't been in a book club in some time. And I've been reading new books. But I was very interested once I watched the video in this Urugu. I think it's going to be something I definitely can build on because I work actually in IT, but I do want to fortify having more like um, like a voice in the community, kind of helping different people out. And I think it's important for us to kind of start with this and kind of unlearning the bad habits that we've learned through Western co culture and seeing how we can move forward. So. I see. Mm -hmm. Ms. Santana. Hi, my name is Jeremy. I'm originally from Lagos, Nigeria, married to Ra. And this will be my first book within so many years. He knows I don't read the book for nothing. Cobwebs, cobwebs, there's a lot of cobwebs everywhere. <laughs> I'm not a reader, but I have to challenge myself to try new things. I'm actually, um, my last day, I'm taking two online classes from the Arizona State University, and Tuesday's my last day, so I'll be done with classes for this coming Tuesday so that I could focus on within the book. Mm -hmm. And that's about it. Miss mm -hmm. <laughs> Ford, Sunshine, she looks like she's hot. Hi. I'm Sunshine, also known as Latanya. I'm a member of ACHA, ACHK in Toronto, as well as my children. Um, born in Canada. My background is Jamaican, so I'm a Jamaican born in Canada, and um, I'm taking this to build, just to build upon um, my knowledge. You got me? Okay. Peace and blessings to everybody. Uh, and you me, father of eight, grandfather. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this this is one of them, and I'm a grandfather, so big family. I'm glad to be here. In uh, Yorubu, it's a tough book. It's, it's it's on a college level, so don't worry. We're gonna we're gonna knock it out. We're gonna knock it out. <laughs> I don't want people to get scared. We're gonna oh, knock yeah. it out. Oh yeah, but it, it it's very good. It's a very good book. I'm glad to be yeah. here, and I can't wait to get started. And by the way, Miss Wheeler, he's from Texas. Yes, hi, yeah, I'm from Thank San Antonio. You. San Antonio, yeah, from Dallas. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Ah, yeah. You're next. Yes. Oh, greetings, everyone. Um, my name is Aya, and I'm 
six weeks old in North America. I just recently moved smack in the middle of winter <laughs> into Canada, but I'm originally from Uganda. I'm, uh, I'm a visual artist, but mostly over the past uh, 10 years, I've been in education and utilizing the arts as a tool for enhancing how children learn. Um, I have two daughters and I am very deeply passionate about all things African and all things black, our history, because we've had to dig deep and look far and wide to figure out our own stories. Um, so I was very interested in book clubs. I'm an avid reader, although I've not had a chance to dive in as deeply as I wanted in this particular text, but I look forward to doing it together. Um, but I'm excited about being here and meeting all of you. I feel like, like yeah, you find family everywhere you go. So I'm thankful for that. <laughs> yeah. Miss Linda, I guess we're going to start our libation so we can get this work going. We're going to yep. be discussing the introduction and um, possibly the, the chart. I think I could put up the charts if we discuss that. Okay. So should I do the libation? No? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So normally um, when we do the libation, we would face east, but you know, we're all bit virtual, so we can pretend as if we're facing east right now. And my trusty husband will be doing the pouring and I will be doing the, the libation statement. Mm -hmm. So hold on a sec. Um, oh, 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 I don't know what I just did with the video. What did I do? Oh, okay, here you go. All right, so can everybody see Eugene? Probably. Yes. Yeah, they can. They can. No, we, we, could, we could see you. We could see right. you. Okay, so. <clears throat> so libations are poured as part of rituals such as birth, childhood, adulthood, eldership, ancestorship, and special celebrations which mark the African rites of passage. I actually am um, saying what we're doing is a special celebration of Urugu. So it seems fitting to begin our book club study of Yorugu with the guidance and wisdom of the ancestors who went before us and those whose lives were lost in the middle passage. So we pour libations for all who dare to define, defend and develop our interests as people. You say Ashe. 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 For our ancestral land. Ashe. 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 For our people then and now. Ashe. 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 For our children and those yet unborn. Ashe. 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 For Kawaida and Guzu Saba and Ma'at. Ashe. 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 For the systems of views and values which give identity and purpose to our lives. Ashe. 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 For the new world we struggle to build and for the continuing struggle to reconstruct and reconnect our history and humanity in our own image and words according to our needs. Ashe. 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 So we ask the ancestors to drink and quench your thirst. Ashe. 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 It's finished, it is done. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. So how many people were able to finish the introduction? Yeah. Everybody I finished the introduction? Most, yeah. I didn't finish, I got halfway through. <laughs> uh, what about you, Sunshine? I got, I got about halfway through also. Okay. So um, do anyone have any questions in regards to the introduction? Um, was there something that you guys may have not understood or y'all want to discuss? Also, um, when y'all read, make sure you write your questions down if you have any questions. So, because we could discuss the, que the questions and answers here in the Zoom meeting. Go ahead, Yanyama. No, I, I was just, that, that's a good idea to, to have a notebook or, or um, one of those, uh, you know, just something simple. You're muted. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So something simple, like a notebook. Uh, it, it always helps whenever I, I do a book club. Um, my, my, my thing is, like, she begins talking about ontology, the European ontology and the African ontology. Could you, could you go into that a little bit more? Well, ontology is basically talking about the existence, the worldview. So when she, when she, like, are you, are you, the question, is it referring to the European or African? Well, I just want us all to be on the same page. Okay. What, Cause she, she's trying to get us to, to have the understanding of Yorubu's ontology and what African ontology is. And I know right. some people kind of overlook ontology, but it's very important. It, it's like yes, the foundation it, it of is. the book. It is. One of the um, things that I, we discussed last meeting is making sure that people have a dictionary with them, make sure that they understand the words that are being said there because when we discuss the ontology, that is very significant in understanding the subject matter, which is um, European culture and, and behavior, right? And so how did that, how, like she, she's trying to trace the root of their way of thinking. And so that's, the book deals with that and the ontology has to be understood. This is basically the whole, ontology of Western civilization. But is it, do anybody else got anything to add in regards to ontology? Or are people still not understanding what ontology is? Um, the sense I got is that it is, that is really what she is um, exploring from beginning to end in her book. And uh, in order to do that, she has to start off by um, making sure that she sets the framework for where we begin. And looking at the, um, that the, the European side or, or, or just debriefing that initially um, puts us, starts the whole process with us because we generally look at, um, our world, we looked at every, everything that we're doing through that kind of that Eurocentric um, viewpoint. And uh, what, she, what she's doing at the beginning is setting that framework, telling us how she's gonna proceed, the step-by-step -step method that she's gonna use. And I think she's also defining as she goes through that terminology that she's gonna be using as she goes through the, the book. Uh, I found that the, a lot of the charts were useful because you could kind of go back to the initial um, uh, video that she did um, where she had gone through each one of them uh, step right. by step. So it made it a lot easier um, to kind of on your own kind of process um, each one. I, I actually, uh, I just kind of looked at them and kept saying to myself, oh yeah, that's what she was talking about. Cause I couldn't see it well. <laughs> and it was kind of um, just reaffirming the, um, the different levels that she was gonna go through as she explored um, our viewpoint as well as their, the Eurocentric viewpoint. But we've got to debrief um, all of our consciousness, all of our thinking, all of the strongholds we've got on our minds about um, the uh, kind of that Eurocentric uh, view. That, that's where I, I kind of began. And the whole introduction to me actually was just like the whole book. She talked about what she was doing step by step. So even when I started, I, I actually just kind of peeked through the, um, the first chapter. Um, you'll find that having gone through the introduction, you can kind of follow along. I think sometimes you can probably just go back to the, um, the introduction part and see the section where she talks about what she's going to be mentioning in each chapter. So I, I thought it was a, a nice step-by-step -step, um, process. And I think it will get a, help us to get through it easier having looked at the introduction because now we can go back chapter by chapter and maybe connect to what she was trying to, um, to bring forward chapter by chapter. I would like to also add that the, 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 the book, the rest of the chapter is basically supporting her argument. Mm -hmm. She has the evidence and she discusses the um, philosophers and 
how they're thinking and stuff like that. So the rest of the book is the evidence for all for the whole introduction. And I, I put the video there because I thought the video, I'm glad that you mentioned the video because it's there, I put it there for a reason to um, help support um, in understanding the book. So I'm glad you mentioned the video. I Anybody else? The first, the first chapter, the first, the introduction, sorry, was heavy. Um, but I think I actually went into the, sec the, the first chapter. I had some extra time. You'll be pleased to know, Ra. Um, but the introduction was very heavy. And I think it probably will be worth reading it a few times because um, the book, the rest of the book seems to flow a lot faster when you get your grips on the, um, the different terminologies that she uses and the new way of thinking, new to us way of thinking um, that she follows through with the rest of the book. So um, I'm, I'm glad that we had a week to read it so we could absorb it. It's like the foundation for the rest of the book. Um, and I'm sure we'll have to keep going back and forth, you know, as we read. But and that's okay because the more you do that, the more you get to a, get a deeper understanding. So you found that the next chapter is a lot easier than the introduction. I've already read half of the first chapter, and it was a lot easier going than the, the introduction. Well, but I have I, to go back know, and read it again. You know, I read the the first chapter already. I know, and <laughs> it gets it gets even heavier. Oh. Right. Well, chapter one. And um, I actually, there's some books there that she mentioned that I think we should also be reading after this book. And, and one is um, Iceman Inheritance. I briefly mentioned Michael Bradley. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I read the subtitle. It says, Prehistoric Sources of Western Man Racist, Sexism, and aggression and the other one which kind of surprised me i don't know if a lot of people know about shrada lubick but i actually have the book that she talked about it's called sacred science and the subtitle is the king of pharaonic theocracy have y'all have any of any of y'all have this book or by any chance no, read something from right. shrada lubick no. Mm -hmm. Now, Schroeder Lubick, what he does, he explains how he basically is proved that the Egyptians are African in just the way their culture and thought is. But the funny thing is, like, we all respect his work, but he thought the Egyptians were white people. <laughs> I mean, but that's, a, that's the only problem I had with his, his stuff. But he, you know, he, he, he discusses how irrational thought is actually a higher a higher form of intelligence because what, what, what he mean by that is inspiration you know how things come to you and it's not rational but it it's you solve a problem it's out of the out of the back but um you're gonna say it you're gonna ask a question you know I mean, or make a statement yeah i had a question on the book you said he said that people were african but they were white is that what you're saying no, he thought there were, because he thought, this guy, um, he actually left the Nazi party. He was, uh, he, um, and what he was doing was, he, he thought he was studying, you know, back in those days, people thought, you know, the, the powers to be thought the Egyptians were white and that they're descendants from these people. For, for a long time, the Europeans were, um, we're trying to claim like connection to all these things. And then, you know, they, they develop evolution because they realize that their origin doesn't lie with Hemet or in other places that they thought they um they did. And so eventually, you know, I mean he you know, this that's the only problem I have with, with him. But other than that, his breakdown, he has another book called Simbo and Symbolique. Now, in regards to reading a lot of this stuff, they, what, what happens is they get wordy, right? A lot of these words sound sophisticated, but it's not, you know, like symbol and symbolique or like, you know, people always talk about quantum physics and 
when they want to sound sophisticated, but quantum just means small. So it's the physics of small things, like things that you can't see with the naked eye and stuff like that. Because um, the discussion is like with quantum physics, small things and large things behave differently sometimes, you know, so that's where quantum physics comes from. But um, and back to the, the book, the book is wordy. Um, it is going to get tougher, but we're here to support one another um, in, in, in breaking this book down. And we're going to break it down because when I when I was looking at the introduction, I saw um, how helpful the chapter, the second chapter is, and also the chart. Me and Sunshine had a discussion outside of the book club in regards to the chart, and it was very helpful. So we're going to keep the chart. Um, I, what I did was I actually printed out a separate, I separated the charts and just have them in paper so I could just look at them while I'm reading. Yeah, that's a good idea. Eugene, I can't. Yeah, I'm here. I um, I just had a question. Um, it's some of the terms. I didn't. I don't know if anybody has. Um, I think it was around page twenty in the intro, and I, I, I was like, I don't know what these terms are. Um, aeronology, a r y a n ology. Did you guys? I don't have my book because it's in my other phone. But um, I was just like, I don't know. I got stuck there. I didn't know what those were referring to. And I did try and look them up, but I didn't get anything, any clarity over it. And I think that uh, another term, I was like around where it says the reconstruction of the, the, revo the reconstruction of revolutionary African culture. And then it had some terms like, Ox, oh gosh, O C C I D E N T. Occultism. Yes. Yes. Can anybody speak a little bit on that? Yeah, I'll 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 I'll, let, I'll speak on that if nobody would, but I want to find where you are where you're reading that. Up. I'm gonna get my other phone to pull it up. I just had yeah, to yeah, yeah. From, from what I remember, I think Aryanology is the studying of the Aryan people. I Thank think you. I was going to yeah. say that too. Like, Aryan. Do you, do you know where, what, what page is that? Uh, I thought let it was me see. 20. Oh, page two? 20 or two? That's what I wrote in my notes. Yeah, page two in the introduction. But the Aryan race, as far as. Yeah, Aryanology. Uh, I mean, like is I, is, uh, yeah. Uh, what I've read up and just of Aryan of how they their viewpoint. I've know most of my things from Hitler's time. Yeah. Um, yeah. of him feeling like the Aryan race or where white people right. are like the first people. They have that whole thing where they feel like they're out of the Caucasus Mountains or where Georgia is because of I forgot the philosopher that thinks that uh, the most beautiful white people came out of Georgia. So he said all white people oh, came out yeah, of the caucus. I, I remember mountain. that. I remember that. And um, that they're Aryan. So it's pretty much saying that they were the, the start of people. They're the start of humanity. They're the most beautiful and pure people as far as that. And and it's the concepts. I, I noticed like really discussing a lot of different things just out loud. And my husband talking about it. Um, a lot of the words that we use when the European concepts uh, concepts of them are contradictions, like they're not what the word actually means. European nationalism is kind of completely opposite of what nationalism is. So he's like, that shouldn't even be the word then, it's not nationalism. But I was like, but that's the whole point. They hide behind the lies. They're not the truth. They don't have the principles of not. So like everything is like backwards in comparison to what the real meaning is in the Arianology. And, okay. and, and in Google, and if you Google uh, Indo-European, you get a better understanding. They, they, they don't use Arianism no more because of Hitler. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they will say Indo-European, the Indo-European language, the Indo-European cultures. 
Okay. That can help you out. Thank you. Any, anybody else got anything to add in regards to Arianology? I think, um, Sunshine, you had another term that you said that you didn't quite get. Um, hoping that I spelled it right. Um, o C C I D N T A I S T. Occidentist. Yeah, and I didn't write the page number to reference it, so that I might have to go back and look for it. Still on that page two. That's it's on page two. Yeah, in the introduction section. Thank you. Second paragraph. And why to describe himself as an occidentalist? Yeah, why did I send this? No, okay. Isn't Occident East and Eastern? Isn't that what the it's meaning is? Hinduism. Of yeah, okay. It's like Hindu. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Is there any other? Um, Actually, if you, if, you look up, if you look up the definition of occidentalism, it says it refers to and identifies representations of the Western world in two ways, as dehumanizing stereotypes of the Western world and as ideological representations of the West. As applied to? No, don't, don't okay. say the end of that. No, because then you have to finish. Is that the same thing? <laughs> Let me look up the definition. Still relating to the Western world, though. Yes. Inhabitants of the West, native to the West. So that's what that. Anybody else? Um, any other questions? Now, um, Veronica, what about you? Um, you said you read the whole introduction and did, did you go a little further than the introduction? Yes, I went to, I started um, chapter, chapter one and that's where I found it was useful to kind of um, have that uh, introduction behind you and then start in um, to the chapters because I did flip back to see what he, what she had said about um, chapter one in order to, you know, get a, a, a kind of a mindset for reading through the chapter. And so it, it, it was revealing because she, I know chapter one was a lot that she talked about the philosophers, the Greek philosophers and stuff. And um, just looking back and forth, I think it was helpful to know that, you know, you're going somewhere with this because um, if you just like say skip over the introduction and don't really take it in. If you start a chapter one, it might feel like you're just going into another space. You're wondering how is this connected to what, <laughs> you know? But um, to, to know the progression that she's using step by step in order to help us to um, break down some of the, 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 the beliefs that we already have. And she's looking through it um, from the perspective of um, a, 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 an African person whose mind is already kind of connected to a, a lot of the different um, um, worldviews that um, the, the Europeans have kind of exposed to us and, and a lot of claims that they make. So it's like break them on, break them down, break them down. That's, that's kind of how I'm, I'm taking it step by step. Even in some of the terminology, what I find is that she uses a lot of terminology, but then um, a lot of times you got to kind of read through the intent. Don't just stop either at a word that you don't get, <laughs> right? Um, keep on going till you finish the paragraph because a lot of times you, you get to get a sense of what those words had meant. Um, even like um, for that, uh, where you were talking about uh, Sunshine, what I found for that was that she was introducing a whole lot of 
philosophies, African philosophies and minds uh, and points of views that we already have, a lot of scholars in there. So, you know, then you get the idea, oh, well, each one of these scholars are focusing in on different aspects or areas, right, that we can draw from. So I think sometimes, even with the terminology, you, you, if it really stumps you, okay, you get the definition, but read through to the end of the paragraph. Because a lot of times I found that um, through the whole introduction, I found that as you read on, you know, it became clearer and clearer because she's, she's, she, she also breaks it down into simple language in between as well that you can kind of mm -hmm. tie it together. Yeah. You know, one of the things in the introduction on page four, I think for those who, who are just getting into this introduction, it is, you know, they, they define culture there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That's important mm -hmm. to understand. Um, she has six. Yeah. Wait, the third paragraph? Four and the third paragraph. It's yeah. in the bottom mm -hmm. yeah. of page the four. The sixth. I don't know if everybody book is the same. Come on. Yeah, it's yes, in, in the third paragraph. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Noble? And so yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's nice. important to understand the definition they're using of culture. Mm -hmm. um, just to be able to understand the, the whole premise of the book. So make sure you, un, you, you read those sections carefully for those who just gotten into the book. And for those who have read the introduction, go back to that section on page four and five because mm -hmm. they, that's, you know, culture is what we're discussing and, and how they decide, define it is important. Mm -hmm. I'm all, I got some, I'm trying to, I'm looking at some of my notes to see um, if there's anything else that I, but if, uh, while I'm looking, if anybody got anything else they want to comment on or want to go to take a look over. And, um, <laughs> what, what we were talking about when we were reading it was that, um, I think we mentioned this to you as well, Ralph, that a lot of, um, the points that she makes, she uses, she actually uses a lot of words to explain the point. So as Ronica said, you keep reading and reading and reading and it, it does become clearer um, because she, use, she, she uses a lot of words to say what she's saying, but it can also, there are little snippets there where you can actually get the sense of what she's trying to say um, so as not to be overwhelmed because there's a lot of new language here that we have not been used to as well. Um, so, you know, persistence now, is- the key. She's an anthropologist, was, so she's um, trying to break yeah, this down. I'm just curious if, it's, if it doesn't help if we read together. Like uh, when we do come, is it possible to go through it together? Read well, it through thinking. together? Maybe we can go through that that section right now together on the page four and go through the aspects of culture yeah. one through six yeah. right yeah. now. Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I mean, this is these are things that we could do here. I mean, we have two hours basically for the meeting. If we need to extend it any longer, we can. For those who wish to leave, you have to leave, and we know that yeah, I ain't serious about this. It's illegal. <laughs> No, but um, sure, we, we could go um, and review that. Yeah, I think we should do that. Yeah, yeah I think we should do that. I mean, like, if, oh. that's, if that's a section that is, is key to the whole mm -hmm. understanding, then, you know, that's something we should focus mm -hmm. on and we make sure everybody's on the right page before we, we move forward, you know? Yeah. Is everybody on page four? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Rob, Rob, did you say you had the, um, the illustrations? Can you show any or no? Yeah, I, yeah, I can show them. You talk about the charts, right? Yeah, the charts, yeah. Yeah, give me one second. Um, one, I'm gonna try to open this up. Yeah, see that? Yes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna just go.
go by all seven, um, all eight charts. It's a little so bit small. It's, it's small, Ra. It's could, small. Could you do um, like that one slide at a time or instead of having two? You could put present. Present. If you hit present, like that will um, bring up the single slide. Okay, hold on one second. Um, I'm trying to see where, where it says present. Go, go back out. Go back out. When it says slideshow, it should say present. Top left corner usually is. Is it on the sharing? It's on the bar, on your, your menu bar in the top. Share the screen again, Ralph. Are you in Google Slides? No, I'm actually using a, a software. They, they all have it. Then. Yeah, you should be able to do a presentation though. So slideshow. The first one, just come F5, that one right there. Yeah, that's what I did. Um, you did the first one and it didn't come on the slideshow? Yep, that's what I did. Hold on one second. Maybe, maybe all you need to do is enlarge it. When you do share uh, on from my screen, I can zoom in on my side to see the to see the um, slide. If I don't know if other people can, so I'm gonna start again. Y'all see it? Then it's, it's the same there. side, but that's okay. If everybody yeah. has their book, the charts are in the book as well. Yeah, I can see it. That's the first chart. I don't know. Last time it, when I did it, it didn't do that. Um, let me. Can you enlarge it or not? I should be able to. I don't know why it's not enlarging. Um, what happened, my um, Microsoft Word, I no longer have membership of that. And so I'm using a bootleg version mm -hmm. uh, of Microsoft Word. Um, oh, that's what it is, the bootleg version. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it has limitations, yeah. Ra. No, but I we use we use the one as well. It's it's, it's that's a, a oh, but this this, 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 is, this is the first time it is doing it like this. Um, yeah, but normally it, it should have it. It's just yeah, it's, I don't know. Second, maybe one of the seconds. Oh, I know what's going on. Hold on. Something is. What's happening is it's showing up on my second display and I need to get it out of there. All right, so again. I'll be right back. Yeah.
think I got it now. Hold on. Can y'all see it or no? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's it. That's it. Yeah. What what happened is it, it was popping up on my second um my second screen for some reason. I don't know why. Not the first one. Though. Um, you going back to the first slide? There you go. Okay, that's it. Yeah. It's a. I yeah. read the book a long time ago. Is that if, if I can remember? She refers to these slides during the book, I think. And so she refers, she also refers to them in the presentation. She she broke down the slide in her presentation. Yeah. So I I, I was asking, like when, when we do the little readings, is it will we be able to look at the slide? So I think this is good, like that. Because right now what I'm looking at, I have no idea. I can't remember, but as she explained. Well, the top part is she discussing how she, she, she developed the term Yutama Wazu and basically how the European, how they objectify the universe. And this is the whole breakdown of the process of objectification. So how they objectify the universe. So she says, because they they take out the spirit and everything they do, they're not spiritual. They they make everything is viewed as an object like the other, and and so this is she breaks down this whole process in a book. And the the second one deals with power, how they get power from. It. Do anybody got any questions or want to discuss any of these charts? Hello? Yeah, I guess what, what we can talk about now is like with the first chart coming back from the beginning and then we're on page four as far as where she kind of defines culture. So she says, um, when we're looking at the phenomenon of culture, we impressed by the following characteristics. It acts to unify and to order experience. So its members perceive organization, consistency and system in the respect it provides a worldview that offers up orienting conceptions of reality. So I guess like now tying that into the Utam Mawazo and this chart, right. Like, what is this overall kind of the, the connection in between the culture of the European and this? So, it is actually unifying the order. Well, this is contrary to what the objectification is. Mm -hmm. so are you, are, did you read the first, the first one on the yeah, I read the very first one. I didn't go to two yet, but yeah, I read the very first one that it acts to unify and to order and order experience so its members perceive organization, consistency, and a system. Because the like the way they're um they're defining culture here is a process which gives people gives people a general design for living and patterns and in interpreting their reality. So she, when when she goes into this chart, this is how they're looking at reality, right? And so um, they don't see themselves as like when when it says here a unifying act is how, how like let me, let me let me read that section. If anybody got anything else to say in regards to what Wheeler just read, feel free to chime in. I'm, I'm thinking maybe the second chart might pull it together better because the second chart, okay. European um, Ozi, mind control for world domination, I think it gives you a, a, a clearer look at, um, yeah, like the side where she says create, 
-hmm. the way Europeans are taught to think defines the universe for use of European power over others, objectifying by denying spirit and degrading nature. Okay, we see here how the different levels that they view, um, how they create their their their, um, their whole mindset for for power. the reality. That's what she. Yeah. That's how she. Yeah. So I. That's how she defines maybe, it. Yeah. So maybe when we're looking at that part, um, I thought this chart might come to my mind because you're seeing how they're the, the categories that they're using in terms of how they define how other um, other people. Miss Wheeler, can you do me a favor? Can you read that third chapter all the way down until um, we finish on page five on the on the top part? One yeah. Is there. Go to the steps. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. I think so, we need to go uh, through this. Start. Rob, could I could could you ask her to read from where it says Wade Nobles because this definition is yeah, this this, definition? that's what we're gonna do. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. So that's page four at Wade Nobles, right? Yeah, Wade Nobles defines culture. Okay. Okay, so Wade Nobles defines culture as a process which gives people a general design for living and patterns for interpreting their reality. Its aspects, he says, are ideology, ethos, and worldview. Its factors are ontology, cosmology, and how do I say that? Sorry, before I mess it up. Ethos. Uh, huh? No. So, ology. Okay. Axiology. And it's met. Oh, axiology. Thank you. Axiology. And, yeah. yes. and its manifestations consist of behavior, values, and attitudes. These are the aspects of European culture that we will bring to into focus in this study. Let us see how, how culture and ideology fit together. How the ideology, uh, sorry, uh, how the ideological uh, emphasis in the interpretation of culture is more consistent with its meaning and significance. If we look at the phenomenon of, of culture, we are impressed by the following characteristics. It acts to unify and to order experience. Let's so pause for a second, just to, okay. just to make sure people understand yeah. mm -hmm. what you just read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, um, we're going into. Would anyone it. have any questions in, in um, what she read? If any anybody mis misunderstood or having problems understanding what she just read? No, I think I think it's pretty clear. Um, she's just introducing um, all the different aspects of culture, and now she's going to define them one Do by people one. People know what etymology axiom means. Axiology. Uh, ax axiology is um, yeah. It's, uh, it's I think it's divided into two aspects, which is um, um, one is Ooh, ethics and one is um, aesthetics which come under the heading of ideology and that's how you know yeah use that one word to define the, define those two um it's a nerdy yeah. nerdy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you set oh, the bar geez, right. i'm impressed oh. <laughs> oh, oh, he's outshining you <laughs> the cobwebs are leaving quickly <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> what about ethos Go ahead, Eugene. Let me see how. Uh, no, but no. <laughs> Let somebody else see what I want. <laughs> I just wanted to. Yeah. See how far. <laughs> I did. I did check out some of them. I can't remember what ethos so ethos is. I remember axiology because I really wanted to figure out what that meant. So. Come on, I know you, Yami. You're a nerd too. Come on. So you're just gonna put me on the spot like that. Um, I'm just gonna give it to my view. It's, it's like, it's it's like our culture, our customs. What what do we do on a daily basis? Like he, hip hop could be an ethos, right? With, right. You know, with black people in America, you know, the way we if we wear our hats like this in New York, or the way we talk, the way we dress, uh, is is that pretty close? Yeah, yeah, it, it's yeah. Uh, I mean, 
she mentioned ethos because she's I, I understand the way she talks, she's she's gonna emphasize spirituality. So you she mentions ethos for a reason and, and yes, what you say it is correct, your example. Mm -hmm. Um what about cosmology? Anybody wanna deal with that one? Study of the cosmos. Yeah, study of the cosmos. Study of the cosmos. Well, that's, you know, that's you pretty break broad, it down yeah. a little bit more? Yeah, we had to break it down. <laughs> well, yeah, that's it. That's as far as I'm going. <laughs> what do you mean that's as far as you're going? <laughs> okay, it's a branch of astronomy that involves the origin and evolution of the universe. From the Big Bang, if you want to go into really more detail, Google's my friend here right now. <laughs> from the Big Bang to today and into the it's future. The study of the universe. Yes, uh, there you go. The Big Bang. No, forget the Big yeah, Bang. Yeah, well, Let you know, study of the that. universe. All right, yeah, all right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. 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 And, and that's ethos, a, that's ethos, a, would, would a description of ethos be moral character? Um, More like the spiritual side of... of of that, like for, for um, the way she, how she uses it here is more that way. You're yeah. Eth ethics. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The moral values. Yeah. Basically, yeah. culture is the culture is the values that you deem important, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cultivating. Mm -hmm. And so here she mentions the whole how we view everything and the worldview. Like when you said the Big Bang, and you know, all when it talk, talks about cosmology, really what you just, when they add that, that's the Wazunga side, because yeah, yeah. what they're doing yeah. is, is controlling the narrative. And so her whole argument is that we need to stop using their name, mm -hmm. stop using their, do it through a african center worldview mm -hmm. and, and and start redefining these things. And that's what she is attempting to do with this book. Mm -hmm. And it, all those terminologies, which it makes it harder. I think there's a way to simplify those things because she, she um, a lot of it makes, it kind of makes it harder to understand even though the charts are simple. And so we're, that's what we're basically describing here. And then um, you guys know about manifestation, right? These aspects of European culture that we will bring into focus in this study. So we're, that's what we're going, we're going to be bringing. Let us see how culture and ideology fit together and how ideological emphasis and the interpretation of culture. You understand what that interpretation of culture? Mm -hmm. uh, so basically, can I... sorry, you, can give I me one question? second. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me let me finish this up. All so right. interpretation of culture. Basically, we create our culture. So so for example, let's say we start a whole society ourselves. We decide what is valuable and, and what is important, and that becomes our culture. And then here it says the interpretation of culture is more consistent with the meaning and significance, things that we deem important. If we look at the phenomenon of culture, we express it by the following characteristics, which Willow will read right after Sunshine and after the question. Just to clarify for the um the ethos, it's looking at like a spiritual looking at spiritually, looking at it spiritually. Your like the, the, if you look at, let me, I'm going to look up the meaning real quick. It's, hold on. The characteristic spirit of a culture, the character. era, or common or community as manifested in its belief and inspiration. So, what Yinyami said is our hip hop culture is something like that. And it, 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 it derives what hip hop came in a set early 70s, late 80s, and it just flourished. We had a certain philosophy 
Um, we were inspired by music. We were inspired by, it was, at a time, it was consciousness and uh, social criticism. And then it became, at one time, very Afrocentric, and then very political. And then now it's turning into, um, you know. Now it's like I, movements, I, movements and, I don't know. Like commercialization. Yeah. yeah, commercialization, sex, mm -hmm. and yeah. gangsterism. I mean, even, and not really even gangsterism because the gangster rap that we had in the past were conscious. It wasn't, yeah, it was yeah, yeah. really relating to what was going on in certain areas of the society. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Can, just can to just add to what you're saying about ethos. Hello, can I continue? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. But it, do, it does refer to, to values and practices that distinguish either an individual or a group of people. So it has to do a lot with um, something that defines your character um, yeah, in, in, in such a, a distinct time, way. That, um, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So it becomes your thing, <laughs> in a sense, what drives like, you as a group whoever, of people or in Do you, like, for instance, you ever see those when they sell music, the 60s and what they went through and then the 70s and what they went through? Those are, that's the ethos of that era. You know, they show you like what was important, the style of that moment in the 80s. And now they have the 90s, which makes me feel old now. <laughs> And, um, and, you know, modern generation is going to be a digital, like the era of digital age where everything is, yeah, you yeah. know, online that's, that's and clear. nothing is that's erased. Clear. Yeah, we're in the virtual age now and, yep, coming from, you know, non-virtual to now. So that's very clear. Thank you. But basically, but we're going to be dealing with the European culture that in regards to the book. Okay, got Camilla, it. Yes, so I'll take from, um, so if we look at the phenomenon of culture, we are impressed by the following characteristics. One, it acts to unify and to order experience. So its members perceive organization, consistency, and system. In this respect- Okay, okay hold on, we're gonna go one by one with these. Oh yeah, yeah, oh. well, this is one still. In this respect, it provides a worldview that offers up orientating uh, conceptions of reality. And that's one. And do we understand um, what that means? Everybody, I want to just confirm that unless you, I really want to go into this, make sure that everybody's up to speed. Yeah, I mean, I like the word worldview. It's, right. it's your philosophy of life. How do you perceive life? Are you Christian, Hebrew, Israelite, Muslim, Hindu? How do you see the world and your place in the world? world that, that, that's how I see worldview as, as she's yeah. stating. But orientation, right? I want to get, because orientating, you know, and, and for example, in ASCAT and in a, a lot of scholarly work, that deals with um, African-centered um, um, studies, orientation plays an important role, right? So, so for example, like how we look at the, like if we look at the, how the Kemet, use look at Africa, they looked at it, you know, right side up, I'm gonna say. And that that's the orientation where, where that's why you had, um, the whole their worldview had a particular look, and 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 even the time clock, for example, how people used to measure time lunar, like like the Native Americans, how many moons, how many cycles, yeah. and versus the uh, the actual ticking clock, and there's there's actually groups in the United Nations that actually deal with trying to go against this mechanical clock because they they think that mechanical clock brings disharmony. We don't look at things in cycles anymore. So we, 
that that harms us in many ways, like crops. I mean, we like how how things are managed with food, um, hot bees, um, insects, like important things, migration of animals. Everything is still in cycles, and we we kind of took ourselves out of that. And so orientation plays an important role because it's going to part part of the interpretation of your reality. So when we like, what time is it? What what you going to do? You're going to look at a clock instead of looking at the cosmos to get a reference, right? So now you're so busy looking down, you can't go see the universe. So it's part of that separation. I'd say like that's who? a good example because like even like you mentioned like how they saw Africa kind of upside down. And if you look at the world maps, like the ones that they use, it says it says like this is not the actual size of things. And the ones we use today make Africa look super small and makes I'm Europe look you like it's that. comparable <laughs> to the, the size. Original, the, 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 the actual the actual size of the map, they actually have a map that's called Peter's Project Map, uh -huh. which if you see Af the continent of Africa is the largest continent on the planet. And like basically all these countries could fit in Africa. And there's a lot of pictures now that shows you that how, how like I think Africa is like four times, four times the size of the United States. And then and what they do, they look, and that's part of orientation too. You see how they made the peninsula of Asia look big. Europe looks <laughs> big and really Madagascar is probably the size of Europe. The, 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 the island, mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's like the size of Europe. So really is Europe, why Europe is a continent when it's, it's such a small landmass? That's, that's orientation and that's a problem and how we view in reality, right? They're distorting reality. Mm -hmm. Right, right. My, my biggest thing is like the date. They actually would, it's February 28th, 2021. Go. Why it's is it calendar, that date? Yeah. Who told us is that date from from whose Bro. orientation? Yeah. yeah. Bro. Bro. Yeah. And so it, it becomes, this is, this becomes very deep, right? It's almost like you're born in the matrix right. of somebody else's interpretation of the universe. And the problem with that is, it's an incorrect interpretation. That's what yeah. we need to understand. And they actually follow this to, you know, the end of day. They're actually they're willing to follow and, and go along. It, even scientists, this is why we got to be very careful with a lot of things. Even scientists today. They are all caught up in this, and part and, mo and mostly is all about the concentration of power. That's why we ain't getting rid of COVID nineteen that easy. Why? Because we don't want to shut down the, the the society for two weeks. Why? Because it causes us to think, oh, if they could do this, then really they don't need to be exploiting people. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's you know, that's just a small taste. <laughs> Ms. Wheeler. That's your lovely voice. <laughs> All right, number two, it gives people group identification as it builds on shared historical experience, creating a sense of collective cultural identity. Anybody want to build on that one? That's right, forward. It's so what you guys trying to do. Is that just a right? ACH? ACHA. That's basically what you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. Y'all want to break that down a little bit? Sunshine, you were saying something? Sunshine was saying something. You're oh, still muted. muted. I was trying to um, understand that one. I was going to put it out there. Um, it's a collective view. So, like, <clears throat> different, like, people observing the same thing around yeah, the like world. Like Kwanzaa, Worldwide. for example. Well, no, no, just, just like 
doesn't need necessarily need to be worldwide, but with white supremacy, it is worldwide. Right. But you guys are y'all trying to maintain Kwanzaa. Y'all, y'all having events based on um, Pan African, Pan Africanism, and trying to share each other's cultures, like the ginger, um, cooking with ginger from every everybody from the different backgrounds. You know those type of things relate to that. Yeah, I guess like when when we start getting into the second part, though, I guess that's where I start seeing like the kind of the hypocritical nature of it because it will say like shared historical experience but if we're talking about Europeans like they don't all have a shared experience a lot of Europeans now have assimilated into being seen as white so the Irish European experience historically is not the the British experience even though they feel one in the same now so it's kind of no, well, they they do have a shared experience. They do. It is a sh- even the even with the, the Irish. The thing is, is that because of the uh, because of this culture that the um, Muslims have developed, the Europeans, mm-hmm. they they objectify that group of people. Like, okay, that's what that they did. This like everything that they have done to the whole world, they have done to themselves. So. They they could not se- they they could easily separate us, but at that time they separated the Irish, right? They were like, no, you guys ain't, you know, y'all ain't wasp. And then after the Irish, you know, were Catholic, they were like, Mm-mm, because the Queen of England was, um, she became head of the church and all that stuff. So, so there was a there was a fight. They had a fight, and they still fight among themselves for this power that we talked about for who's going to be the, in the top of this white power structure. That's what's happening now with, with when Biden and Trump, they're both a-holes, you know, but, but they were, they're fighting for power. And then guess who gets involved? Us clowns. We're like, ah, and we get involved. And, and, and you know, yes, we got to vote our interests, and stuff like that, I understand, but don't get bamboozled and don't get into the fight where you, you're you gonna get hurt. In a way, it brings us to this book club right here in terms of a, a, a shared um, experience. And um, we're actually connecting with our cultural identity by going through this whole process. So I think we're kind of like the active side of it, <laughs> you know, yeah. having this club. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. right, let's get to the third one with Miss Wheeler. Yes. Uh, number three, it tells its members what to do, thereby creating a voice <laughs> of uh, prescriptive authority. To its members, culture represents values, which they themselves have created together out of shared experiences as a system, uh, a systemic set of ideas and single coherent statement. May I say, how many times do we say, let's look at the Jews as an example of how to get power and try to, try to- um, Community. Be able to, yeah, have a community. They all come into one thing. They chose, they say, okay, we're gonna use Judaism as a unifier and that's gonna be, I mean, even if some of them don't believe in it, they still have a strong connection to that culture. Mm-hmm. Anybody got anything to say or we could go to the next one? Next one. All right. Number four, it provides the basis for commitment, priority and choice thereby imparting direction to group development and behavior. Indeed, it acts to limit the parameters of change and to pattern the behavior of its members. In this way, culture helps to uh, initiate and authorize its own creation. For us, slavery, we got indoctrinated and we became self-refueling. So it's been bad for us in in the new world this side of the hemisphere. 
Um, anybody got any questions in regards to that? No. Okay, let's go to yeah. the next one, Ms. Wheeler. Okay. Number five, it provides for the creation of shared symbols and meanings. It is therefore the primary creative force of collective consciousness. And it is that which makes it possible to construct a national consciousness. Um, anybody want to talk about Kwanzaa? Yeah, that. I mean, that's what Kwanzaa is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My, I, I mean, like we can name many things. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. She had symbols um, like uh, Adinkwa symbols and stuff where we all, where we, we have one meaning behind it and we kind of know. We, we can actually look at things and, and have a connection to it, you know, regardless of where we are. So that, that in, itself, in itself is, is, is culture. Well, you know, the white supremacists also use symbols, right? They, they have yeah. flags, yeah. they have emblems, mm -hmm. they have uniforms when it comes to yeah. their military. Mm -hmm. um, you name it, they, they use a lot of the stuff that we invented to, yeah. it reinforces Right, it reinforces the belief. Right, mm -hmm. so if I if I got if I'm a, if I'm practicing Santeria and I have a statue of Yemaya, I ain't praying to Yemaya. She, the statue represents the finger pointer to what I'm trying to tap into. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. or like people with the Jesus Christ and the cross. Right, mm -hmm. it, it, it it's not that it's praying to the cross. The cross become is a way to, to reinforce. You know, have a it's a visual aid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like the chart that we we gonna be using. Yeah, so. yeah. symbolically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, and then the last number six. For all the above reasons, it impacts on the definition of group interests and is potentially po political. Yep. Mm -hmm. So basically. We we discussed it, right? We mentioned we gave certain examples, but uh, let's use the the Nazis. Look at what they did. And they they galvanized. They had an idea. They galvanized, and they were able to maintain power. Like people don't really know that the Nazis at the time were like about eighteen percent of the population. Mm -hmm. It was a party. It was a small party, and they were able to take over. Germany. So if you look, it, you know, a lot of people be like, half of the country in the United States right now is is flying the banner of Donald Trump, right? In the United States. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, we're talking about, you know, Donald Trump is talking about starting a party and about 70% of the people in the Republican Party are willing to go there. And we're talking about half of the population. So if 80% of the pop, 18% in Germany to take over, you know, eventually it, it could happen here in the United States. So this is why we look at the, all these things that um, she has in this book. I mean, it's very important. Um, just to say, I think in, in as much as it applies to the white world, it very much does apply to us as well. I know yeah. coming from my country, my country, which has, because the idea of culture and, and all, the step, well, all those elements that have been included, I, I can see why we're in such chaos, chaos in our cultures back home. We're, we're almost unanchored in ourselves because we've lost elements of it. But if you maintain those elements within it, then you do create this strong anchor to something that yes does right. lead to this kind of po political political strength in a sense just well, my thoughts coming from the discussion well like for example the you you guru right it's this is it's like a virus we what yeah. what what we have done in our own community in our own country is we're not even operating from our own ethos right we're coming from an ethos that was designed by, like this is post-colonialism. So this is, we still under colonialism. Who controls the bank? Who can control trade? All those things, like the whole, cultures were destroyed and redesigned. 
people are not live like people who think they have a who are in in the mainland of Africa are practicing a culture that I guarantee you is a lot different from your ancestors. You know, just because of their influence, their redesign, the whole power structure. I mean, a, a perfect example would be how wh- how the Fulani got power in the whole Western Africa, if you know that history, right? Where they uh, a lot of them converted into Islam, and they weren't looked at as bad by the when the Europeans came and fought them. I think it was the English fought them, and they they were considered. Um, more favorable because they were like brethren. They were Abrahamic. The the English were they were Christians. They were Abrahamic. And um, what happened? The Fulani started looking at other people. Oh, you guys are paganists and heathens. The same thing, you know, like the Europeans thought. So it was like okay, they became administrators. And in Nigeria right now, they control the oil as well. They control Trey in Guinea. And so a lot of people, though not knowing the history, yeah. are wondering, oh, these people are skilled and they, what they do. And, and, and really, it's because they were put there. It wasn't like some special talent or some gift from the creator. Yeah, they, they share the common and see the. Wow. Wow, Eugene. You're impressive today. Man, Cool Breeze is like quiet, but he's a man today. (laughs) Any 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 other anybody have any other comments? good how how fast you guys want to go with this because one of the things that we decided in the last meeting is we're going to determine the introduction um the the pace of how how fast we want to read i'm going to opt myself out of it because even linda who you know she, she, she's, she's a brown nose teacher pet. <laughs> Ask me, don't, because I was like, Linda, do you think it's, I, I should just read and read? She's like, no, wait for the group. And, uh, and I understand, <clears throat> you know, I got a lot of grease in the back of my ear. So I, I just, I'm going to opt out and let you guys decide the pace of the book. And I'll just go along with it. And I'll be just, a, you know. I'll follow along whatever this is. Okay, so it looks like chapter one is like, oh yeah, I got gifted the book, guys. So I'm excited, but <laughs> it's like this, this big. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Do you guys want to break that up in half? <laughs> should we do the whole chapter? Or how do you- um, I think I think we should try to go for it. Go for the whole yeah. chapter. I think we should try to go. I, I started this already as well. So, um, and it's, you know, I've, I've probably gotten what, less than a quarter of the way there. But um, I mean, even if we don't get through the whole thing, you know, at least we we could try, you know. But I, I think we, we should go for it. I don't know what anybody else said. That's just my view, though. Am I well, well. Well, um, the thing is, you saying go for what? Like, uh, we're the chapter to determine one. the pace. Chapter one. Chapter one. So chapter the whole one. chapter one for next week. No, but remember, there's people here that haven't finished the introduction. So. No, oh, that's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, we need to. Okay, so we, we need to pick a spot. Can Can I uh, suggest that we? I I I. I, I... Sorry, I was just saying, I, I prefer quality over the speed of it, but it's it's almost better if we do get deeper into the text. So when we're done with the book, we're pretty much like tycoons of it, <laughs> right? Like we totally understand we every go, element We're going to be tycoons of the book. That's not a, <laughs> that's, that's not a, that's a given. 
That's a given. We're gonna be. Um, trust so me, we're gonna, I, we're gonna help feel, each other uh, out. If we can, I feel going slow doesn't mean we waste time. Yeah, I feel like uh, if if it looks as big, I know I have it on my computer and it looks quite long. I don't know how many pages. Um, that's, uh, I'm sorry, I can't well, pronounce well, this, your name. This, 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 104. It's not 104. In the first let chapter. Me, me, <laughs> yeah, that's the first thing. chapter. <laughs> let me make a general. No, it's not 100. It's not 100 pages. It's like 70. Chapter one. Remember, the intro is 25. No, the first I, chapter. The we front, did. The we did. The first chapter is, yeah, it's about 70 pages. 70. Yeah. It's not that bad. But yeah. um, but remember, like like I said before, and I said this in the last meeting. So I wanna, if, if you guys didn't re, um see the last meeting, I'm gonna be posting these up and sending them out to you guys. Um, in the I told them we we want to finish reading this book and we don't want to take a whole year dissecting this book because it doesn't take that long, mm -hmm. you know, a whole year. So I want to speak, I want to, I'm going to be the one pushing for the speed and somebody has to be the anchor and we got to then meet in the middle uh, uh, on the pace. And I want to do, by the pace, I mean, how many pages do you want to read on a weekly basis? You know, so if we go by chapter, each chapter have a different page. Yeah. So I just want to make sure we be fair to everybody for those. Who, well, remember, each who, chapter uh, also has a different kind of focus. And, and what I found yeah. was reading through the introduction, it took longer because you had, you're kind of looking at the charts. You didn't know exactly where you were going. Um, you didn't, it was like, mm -hmm. you, you didn't know how things were together, fit together. Um, I actually, when I did the introduction, I took my more, more time on the introduction because it then got me to understand how the book was going to progress. And uh, when I got into um, the uh, chapter, the first uh, chapter, then I was, you know, you, you kind of feel like you have to keep reading mm -hmm. <laughs> once you start into it because it builds, <laughs> you know, and you, you kind well, of it, it does have concept. each chapter are divided too. Yeah, so it, mm. they have. We could look at it. We could look at the 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 first chapter right now and determine where we want to stop, right? Because mm -hmm. like. So like that, we know, like for instance, if we go to, let me look at the first chapter. Part one. Okay, part one is the um, cultural construction of thought. So we're gonna look at the epistemology. So let's see how far is that. By the way, this is how I take notes. You see, I write on my book. So don't be afraid, you know, those blue spaces in the side. So, okay, the second section is called, is, Valuing the Senses. Hold on one second. So what we could do is, let's look at the sections and see, that's two, three, theory of human, humanness, that's three. So instead of um, saying, let's do the whole book, we could, oh, four, a new dominant mode. So we can read the sections and determine how many sections we want to read instead of reading the whole chapter and we'll stop at a particular section. So Ra, four, the first, the first two chapters are quite lengthy compared five, to the others. Five. Yes. I heard you, Linda. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to see how many sections is chapter one. Five, six. Ten. There's ten. There's ten. Mm-hmm. You sure? Well, I was kind of looking too, as far as since we have two hours and thinking about talking about uh, it or what can last for two hours. I was thinking if we 
go kind of because I'm looking at when she kind of starts where uh, we talk about the D, what is it called? What page are you on? Uh, 83, when she talks about the desacralization of nature, but maybe right. not going that far, but somewhere before that. Well, and stopping if, if there so we 10 section, that one the next. Okay, the table of contents. Let me look at the ten. table of contents where it's all broken down in the in the table of content uh, contents it's all broken down by section and it tells you what page. So maybe yeah, Linda says there's ten sections. So yeah. I say let's read five section. Yeah. Huh. Right. Chapter one. Or chapter yeah. one. Oh, well, you can look at that. Then we'll we'll so we'll read the next up to the new five mode. So that means we'll read chapter one in, in two weeks. Like Are they not all the same? Finish chapter season? one. What's that? We might want to look at the topics of the section. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we should go to 50. As I said, they're right in the chapter one. The one, two, right three, three four, four, five. Of in the beginning of the book. So we, we, can, we, can, we can read from. All the way up to the the new the new dominant mode or the next one maybe the next one is it maybe the next one the, the next, next um market? the next one the the lineality and cause scientism and logic mm -hmm. well in a way in a way hold on because they're trying to break it up into about two right yeah, yeah. but i was yeah. thinking the some people have to read the introduction, finish their introduction. Oh, okay, that's right. I keep forgetting. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So, and, and those who need to finish the introduction, uh, you know, let me know. Um, yeah, no, they should, they should and, be the uh, one picking up. <laughs> yeah. I don't want you to. Yeah. 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 Who's it? Sunshine? Sunshine, you want to win? Um, for Who me, the part of it for me. It, the, for the introduction, what slowed me down was um, the wordiness. Mm -hmm. But after discussing some of the content and hearing Ms. Sullivan say, you know, it's kind of like a guide of the entire book, mm -hmm. that's helpful. I think mm -hmm. I'll be able to even get through it the next time I sit down to it, which would be like tomorrow, just get through it, Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? So I'm open to, you know, going ahead with the lit, the lineality of the cause, scientism and logic. Yeah. It, it was just slowing me down. You're willing, I think, to, eh? willing to go all the way up to there to um, page 56? Yeah, but, but I wasn't That's the only one, starts. so I don't know if anybody else wants to speak. Sunshine, sunshine, Hold the on. wording kept everybody back, trust me. We, yeah. It was it was it was tongue twisting <laughs> and mind blowing. <laughs> so you know, Hold don't on. feel you're the on. only one with that feeling. Okay. Also, also understand mm -hmm. when you see page 56 at the beginning, so that means you're gonna that you're adding another like you're gonna have 50 pages around there to read, including the 50 pages, uh, not yeah. including your intro. Oh, well, I don't know. I think it's okay, but I'm not, I wasn't the only oh, one. So well. It starts at 29. The, the no, chapter that's, that's one starts true. at 29. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, but, but people haven't finished the introduction. I, so no, I know. Gonna... I know. But that, that, including up to there is 50 so that's like 20 yeah that, that's like 20, 20, 20. Some pages. i don't and know i think that part. might be a good a good thing to push for because i know like the plato talking about plato can be like two hours sorry my, <laughs> my son got mad <laughs> okay, it was <laughs> talking about plato can take a long time Hold on, hold on. Somebody <laughs> went ahead and read too. It was yeah. silent about it until now. <laughs> you, you, you're a little sorry. Sorry. It's too bad hey. reading that. Like once it, when I started into the chapter, I yeah. felt like I'm reading, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. once you blow past all of that, 
the yeah. Mm -hmm. I just quote because I, I intended just to read the introduction for tonight. I didn't intend yeah. to go any further to tell you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I ended up I just hear, reading. I want to hear from Aya and um, yeah. Yami about um, yeah, what people feel. I'm okay going five chapters by the next time. No, not five chapters, five sections. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're doing yeah. half of, we're, we're trying to like break down the chapter into <laughs> five. You go at five? So yeah. There's 10 five. sections. Five, and five sections I'm goes to the, the new dominant mode. Okay. Right. right. To the new so dominant mode. Good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about you, brother Niyami? I think that's good. Dominant mode? Yeah. Get, okay. Get to, get to that point. Yeah, because I think okay. I think once we talk about scientism and logic, <laughs> those are going to be like an hour of discussion right there, probably. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll write this up and I'll send it so like people to have a record on what we're gonna do. Let me mark this down. I thought you were gonna summarize what we said today, Ra, and send that out. Hold on, I mean. <laughs> you know how heavy this book is? <laughs> no, but the book, the book, at first is intimidating just on the size. Mm -hmm. I think even I think even the color because she <laughs> she went spiritual on the color. So I'm like mm, red and gray, like that's <laughs> that's some stuff. And um uh, and so when you look at it. So Ra, uh, I think oh, I think you should show your book cover and explain the difference, what the significance of your particular book is compared to maybe what everybody else has. I have PD and Yami, mean, let me see how big your book is. I mean, let me see your book cover. I think he may, I think he, yours is old, right? Oh, I, I got the PDF. I'm on the PDF. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. No, that, now the PDF is the oldest. Yeah. The one that I sent out. Yeah. Um, those, let me see, Wheeler, let me see your front cover of the book because it was meant, there was something mentioned yet um, last oh, time. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Is that the one with the K? Okay, like the older book, um, like last time they were discussing, like, um, that she didn't have. There was a K in the word African, right? In the in the, the importance of having a K there, and she was having some issues with having a K there. The thing is, when she first came out, there was not a K there, and this is like one of the earlier books. As you can see, it has a C. My camera is way over there. I don't know. Can you see that? Yeah. Yes, we can see. Oh, it got good focus. You saw that? How it focused? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. mm -hmm. in the beginning, she had to release this book without the K. So, think about how much control these people are having over how we even trying to define things for our own selves. This is why Kwanzaa is important because you know, it talks about sovereignty. What we're gonna do, how we're gonna, like we need to really, like I tell people all the time, we need to stop using um, Western terminology. Comrade, we call ourselves comrade and stuff like that. We talk about we're Marxists and socialists. We need to come with African term, terminology or concept. Or if, they, if there isn't none, we should create it and invent um, words that, that have meaning for us. Right, well, that, that's you know? the tough part is coming to a common agreement when we have these conversations that everybody can understand. Well, well they're, 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 in that part, they don't need to be a common agreement, just a creation of concept, right? See, so, so now people have a concept that exists that they could choose, right? So instead of having concepts that were created by, you know, Western philosophers and, you know, white supremacists, we, you know, we could start like looking for African concepts that are already created, like the creationism, like stuff like that, that 
how they thought back then, or we could develop our own based on some things that we value, right? So, you know, you could create your own concept. And if I agree with it, guess what? It's now yours and mine. And if 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 um, the Buckus family agrees with it, it now is theirs too. So if these things were self, we could identify, we could create our own identity, we could choose what we want to do. We but create our also, own culture that way. But it's also understanding that the Western, Westerners have created things that we, so this book is good because it'll make us understand. A lot of things we take look, for granted, like help we us think, all oh, it's so helpful. Really, it's not helping. Like for example, think, moving to the West and living in the United States really is not helping us because we're financing our own oppression. We are giving them the power to do it. You see? So when you, like when we buy things, a lot of the things we buy, you know, it's harming people. So nobody's hands are clean in this. But, but if you are aware, it helps because then you can make better decisions. Yeah, yeah. So well, you're trying to create a, an awareness. Because we don't, right. we, don't, we don't have the options. Yeah. 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 I can't go to the, the African market right now and, and get what I want. I got to right. go to Walmart. Yeah. Right. <laughs> now, what that does is guess what it does? Then, then if we see, oh, there is no African market, well, it's time for us to create it because we had them. In the, in the United States, they had black, they were black societies, like yeah. very prosperous. Yeah. But they, yeah. had, they had money, like where um, Michael Jackson came from, um, Gary, people there were ab above middle class. So these people, they blew up, you know, communities for a reason. And then the integration came and we, because we hated ourselves by that, by then, we just, we gave up businesses, we gave up doctors, we gave up everything black, associated with black, and we went to the white stores, we went to the white doctors. Today, we even think that the doctors, that the best doctors are white and the oh European science is the best. Not realizing that their foundation of science is our science. Mm -hmm. Vaccine is a perfect example. Mm -hmm. Vac vaccination started with Africans. A matter of fact, the guy who created this current vaccine for for um, Pfizer, he's a Nigerian. Mm -hmm. You don't hear about that. You'd be like, why just creating this? And then you look in the allies, you see a lot of Ghanaians and Nigerians, <laughs> some exile Cubans. <laughs> you know, they, they call it the brain drain reason. They brain drain Africa, take the best people. And because a lot of us are accustomed to the materialism, that's another discussion that this book is going to have. We trade off our freedom for material things that don't really last long. And you can't create a culture or any type, you can't create a nation with it or civilization with it. You know, because for me is you start, you create family, community, nation, mm -hmm. and then hopefully you could become a civilization. Mm -hmm. But it's based on the values that we, how the, you know, your civilization is based on the values you're gonna hold. And if there if there anything based on Western values, it's not. We're still waiting. What Mandela said, we're still waiting for them to civilize. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even a big fan of Mandela. Mm -hmm. I, well, I would add Mandela, something yes. as well. I, I know um, we're, what I'm very excited about this book, and I think one of our main things, our objectives should be is really with knowledge and using this to extract, you know, the European out of our knowledge, out of our, our cultures and different things like that. I know um, I'm in this group uh, with Professor uh, Bania Bello from ha Haiti and there's the big celebration that's coming up for their independence. I, I'm not a French speaker, so I can't say, but it was the Battle of Creates, uh, 
Harold Harriet or something like that. And she put gave us our this objective for us to get information, gather information, so we can put together um, just a whole event for it, so we can kind of uh, teach people about it. And one of the questions were like, "Well, where do we go to get the truth? How do we find the truth?" And like, well, we all know that the truth isn't really out there. So you kind of have to look inward when you're reading and say, hey, you know, reach out to your ancestors, look through spirit and say, okay, is this the truth? Is this not the truth? And that's kind of what we have to do with everything as far as with extracting from the cosmos, sciences, everything, what's the truth? What's African, what's what they indoctrinated in us? Well, I, I will say this, the truth is out there, right? Yeah. But our people, we need to read. When they say read, reading is fundamental, it is. And, and, and not not because, and I, I mean, I hate the fact that I got to read in English because I know I'm, I'm reading the oppressive language, but read any type of reading, I mean, reading is so fundamental. There was a study done in, that the United States, 85% of the people do not have a book in their house and haven't read a book. They don't even have writing intent. And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think that was true until you go visit the Midwest up there, where um, like Michigan, way up there with their Iron Mountain. <laughs> then you'll start believing it. And then they said that people who went to college won't read after them until they die. So we were not reading. And and for the hazy part, I have a good book that I will send you the information for. And it was written by Jacob, Dr. Jacob Carruthers. It is called Irritated Genie, and it's about Haiti. But there is a lot to learn from our history. We, you know, we, we have to do the Sankofa. We got to take elements of the past that work and always work, and principles that work, that always work, and bring it to contemporary times. There's too many times we think linear, just like the Wazunga, where we like, we think we're sophisticated and got new ideas now. And really this, this generation, we're like one of the most dumbest human beings on the face of the planet. Many of us don't know how to survive outside of, if they didn't build this construct that I call the zoo that we're living in, if we were to rely ourselves in nature, many of us will have a problem with that. You know, how many people, you know, going back to nature, they're going to have to rely on, ins like, if they're insulin dependent. That was a Wazunga problem that was created. When I was in Ghana in 98, um, they had people, kids, and most of them were European kids going there Please. in the Peace Corps. How many of you heard of the Peace Corps? The Peace Corps, they went there trying to solve problems. I mean, these kids never been nowhere in their entire life. And they actually experimenting on community villages that were there. And at one time they put a, they put a water well in the middle of the community. Before people used to have to walk and get their water. And they thought that was something helpful, right? Because they were looking at it in a Euro, Euro, with European eyes. What, what happened after that People started getting big, diabetes, all these crazy problems that they didn't have. Why? Because by putting that water fountain in the middle of the community, it caused the imbalance. And so is it even worse? Some of some of the the technology that what we call technology, does it really is it really necessary? I'll give you I'll give you this before um. we close up. I'll give you this before. You know, so, I, sorry, go on. <laughs> the Egyptians had the capability of creating this society. They knew enough math and science to create this. They chose not to create it. When the Chinese had the capabilities of creating bullets and, 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 and all that stuff with the gunpowder, they chose not to do it. And so when the Wazunga got a, their hands on these things, look at what they're doing. 
Look at what they've done. Look at what they're doing. Go ahead, sister. <clears throat> yeah, I just feel that, you know, we are, we are a product of so much past as well. And I consider us also a new age of Black people who are capable of utilizing these tools in such a way that they're useful to us. Um, I, I come from a home where, yes, I carried water. <laughs> and I am thankful to be able to open a tap. I am thankful to be able, you know, I don't, I, I have this, um, I, I find that we, we should not, in learning all these things, going through this book and gaining from the wisdom that, that um, others before us have provided, I think we are best placed to then find the best way for us to utilize it in the now. I think my biggest frustration back home has been that we seem to continually be looking back while the present is just totally falling apart and the future is going farther and farther away. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm saying we're, we're so much, we, we have so much more capability today. Our, our capacity to, to initiate and to utilize and to understand the things that have happened to us in the past is so high today that um, we're capable of providing for our children something more. So that they don't have to hustle the way we have, you know. Um, I I I know that nature. I I live. I left the city to go back into my village, and I was living there for the past fifteen years because I did not like the whole modern way of life. But to see how much time is spent just getting the everyday things of life done does also make me aware that in the world we live in today. It's impossible for the people in my village to catch up because we're still so busy solving just the very basic, the very, we, we haven't yet even started solving the, the integral fundamental issues. We're still just on survival matters on what do I put in my belly? Where do I get clean water? I'm going to walk for five hours to go and come back with a bucket on my head and be exhausted about it, you know? So I feel that we have the potential and the ability to take all these lessons, considering and knowledgeable of what, how they have been used in the past to control us and to, and, to, and to disempower us, but use them in such a way that we can go even further. Um, must we always be inventing the wheel, I guess is what I'm saying. <laughs> Must we always be inventing the wheel, or are we supposed to use the knowledge already? I think it's important too because exactly, I think that is very important. Yeah, Yeah, like there's stuff that's going on now. I was just showing my husband; he's from Zimbabwe, and it's it's a poor country. But I was researching their GDP with the U.S., and I was like, you know, that they just made the U.S. twelve point eight billion dollars. In, in 2019, right? So, like but, <laughs> but also understand, hold on, but also understand these countries are poor for a reason. Mm-hmm. And the reason is because of the, the this. Yeah. They're not poor on their own. If left on their own, they would have been in a different place. That's why it's important to know history, to know what's going on, to know what's happened. So like that, you could better determine where to go in the future, right? And this is what we call Shankova Absolutely. And, and, Absolutely. And, and Ghana. And so yeah. th- like the example that I made, who solved that problem? Who put the water there? Was it us who put the water in Ghana or was it the Europeans? See, like if it was left to you to put water there because it, it's, it's coming from you it won't be a, a imbalance. But if, if it comes, if it's like if somebody build my house and I don't know how to build a house, what, what does that make me? Like I should be able to build a house, be left to my own way of building my, my house. Why? Because it's important, it's important to develop these skills to like, so then let's say you want a house, Aya, right? Now you, and you have skills, now you can say, okay, um, Rob, come and help me build a house. And I can help you because I also have the skills, right? 
And so the, we're not yeah. no longer taken advantage of. We're not put in situations where we decide like yeah. things that are, are against our interests only for the sake of survival. We're put in survival mode for a reason. And that's too clear. Yeah, um, no, I agree with you. Western society to maintain I absolutely power. agree. I absolutely agree with you. Yeah, I, that, I, that in I think the that, right hands, it's more yeah. useful. Go on, sorry. Yeah, no, I just think it's a type okay. of dependency that is kind of imposed on you, you know? So now you believe that you can't do anything for yourself. You, somebody has to come and, and show you how to do it or do it for you, you know? So, yeah. the oh, totally. I mean, the worldview, right? Yeah. This is mm -hmm. important. What is the worldview? What is the reality? Now, so let's say, let's say, let's take Uganda, for example, right? That's, the reality is how she described it. But also we need to just decide like who's there, who's being... What is the bad seed there and what we need to change? And somebody from a foreign land can't just go over there and do that. It needs to come from within, right? Because a foreign entity, Absolutely. And most of them are coming with this idea in their heads, right? They're going to use you, look at, they, China does it all the time. Yeah. Right? China mm -hmm. determines the price of whatever they want to buy from Africa. Mm -hmm. And, and, and like there's countries in, in Africa that only will have like 1.3 million people. So if China said, listen, we're gonna pay you for this and you try to say no, and then they say, okay, we'll go to the next country and pay them an extra dollar. And they're gonna say yes, right? Mm -hmm. And so we need to understand the dynamic and the power structure of this mm -hmm. and how the best move where we're gonna, it's our best interest Right, and it, it, there's no exploitation. What's happened is people in leadership have been managers of these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same as what look at what's happening in the United States. The leadership, we want fifteen dollars an hour, and the leadership is like lying, saying, "Oh, people don't want fifteen dollars an hour." <laughs> we don't want. We don't want. It takes fifteen dollars an hour to be out of poverty. In the United States, working 40 hours, and that in some places that that's that's unreasonable because you can't live off of $15 an hour in LA or in New York, mm -hmm. right? So there's places here where you need more money than that. Now, who's determining those things? And that's what we're that's why it's important to read this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, great point. Mm -hmm. Hey, Linda, you want to close out for us? Um, I'm speechless. <laughs> so I, 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 I'll, well, I'll just sum it up by saying, um, although we're talking about Yorugu, the book, it seems that we will leave this book club with a lot more fuel mm -hmm. to work with yeah. to figure out where we are in this whole zoo. And um, I, I, I seriously, from the discussions we've had, which have been very rich tonight, <coughs> we, will, we will all be a lot better for having understood in detail what this book is about. Um, I'm happy that we're going a bit slower. Um, 50 pages is good. <laughs> and um, I think the discussions around the, as a basis for the discussions, the 50 pages will allow us to take in more deeply what the book has to offer. So I agree, we, we, quality is better than quantity in this instance, for sure. So, and, and, and personally, even just starting to read this book, I'm looking at events. Um, I'm gonna go back to Ted Cruz again. I mean, you, you, can, you, can, you can just see the examples unfolding in front of you with all of the news that you're seeing on the, on the media, experiences in life just dealing with people and how the whole you know, planet the whole planet life. yeah global yeah. warming i mean they, they let me not even go there i'm, I'm supposed to be closing Ra. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll continue this conversation back. next week <laughs> I back. but i i can i can see everybody you know, I mean, your, your microphone is muted Oh, okay, okay. Maybe it was good. Uh, maybe it was good. But I enjoyed it. <laughs>
I enjoyed it, people. All right, everybody yeah. make their closing statement. Um, go ahead, just Miyami, you close and then we have us next. I think uh um, well, how you doing? This is my first time here. Uh, I enjoyed the conversation. You know, this is this is my bag. I like when we talk about culture and African culture and how we're going to develop it. It's going to be going to be interesting and it's going to be good and I, I appreciate it. Let me let me add one thing. The way I met Minyami was we had a discussion on capitalism with some people man, and they were they were bro do they know what capitalism is? Do they, based on what you heard from them? No, they, they don't have a clue. They, they think it's making some money. You know? <laughs> Jay Z and, and Oprah Winfrey. And I was telling them, I, I offered them this book to read. Oh, yeah. <laughs> don't let the dog go. One that we may read. We may read. I, I'm going to suggest this one. I have an extra copy if anybody. Either. Maybe what I'll do is if you can't if you can't get it, maybe I'll chop one the book I have. This is a hard copy though. And um I'll scan it and like give it to everybody. <laughs> Miss Wheeler. You no, know, with your nice head wrap. Everybody got their head wrap. <laughs> yeah, we came African theme tonight. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm, I really enjoyed it. I'm excited for it to go on and I'm really excited for the next ones and to just keep this going. I think this is just going to help us with all our future endeavors wherever that we are with our kids and everything of just moving forward. So I'm excited. Um, Two words, power ever. I am just oh raving to go <laughs> forward ever. Hey, yeah. Hold up. Um, thank you so much. I'm so excited about what comes ahead. And yes, I am. I truly, I feel like I'm home. I'm really happy to see all of you <laughs> in this white, white, snowy land I've come to. So I look forward hey, to next um, Sunday. <laughs> you can put you can put your on chat for the people in Ca the Canadians. Put your on um, contact. They got what's up. What's up? Well, always say what's up. Okay. What's All right. Up. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that. I'll do that in the group. But pleasure meeting you all. <laughs> Well, well, I enjoyed being here tonight, a little out of place, but I think I get used to it. I'm going to go back because I have the PDF, um, I have the PDF, so that's why I'm, I'm on my computer, but going back to the PDF to um, look up the further along with the book. But I'm going to go back again to read the introduction again. And right. then I'll go, you know, just to get used to the book again. And I'm well, just going to catch up. I know you've been taking classes, so if you, you know. Yeah, flood my classes done and until the 2nd of March. So that's this Tuesday, okay. Um. Sunshine. I don't know what to say. I <laughs> um, it's a pleasure meeting the new people from the first time, and um, I'm just looking forward to getting some more reading in. Yeah, we have some people here that um. What, there's gonna be one person coming in next next meeting. She's been following us. Um, she also is taking classes and will be done. I think she's probably doing the same thing you're doing there. Um, so, Sunshine. Yes. You know, you can still contact me during the week, right? If you need any um, going back and forth. Okay. 
that, you guys, I shared my um, contact information on the email. Um, mm -hmm. I understand, you know, conversations help digest this, these things. And I know, I mean, there's, if you're stuck and the conversation will help you get unstuck, that's the type of conversation I would like to have if, if you call me. Because if we got to deal with subject matter that um, deeply, then I prefer to wait until the time of the meeting. But if you do feel stuck or if you need any type of help, um, definitely hit me up. Hey, Eugene, you're the last. Cool breeze, your mic is in mute. Yeah, so everybody was nice have, nice being here tonight. Very interesting conversations. Um, and I look forward to, to next week, you know. Happy reading and, you know, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Eugene, man, you surprised me today, man. <laughs> I'm like, yo, this brother, he's a sleeper cell. I'm like, wow. <laughs> Breaking some stuff down. <laughs> Don't he got a radio voice? Like we have a, yeah. the the college colleges over here and universities have like Caribbean um that music sections. You got the voice for it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the DJ. Mm -hmm. Well, anyways, listen, I'm glad that everybody's here. I'm glad to Finally, um, see Aya and um, Miyami today. Miss Wheeler, I'm proud of you too. You know, you're breaking stuff down, talking about philosophy and playing all like, oh. So, you know, I, so, um, Boraniga, always a pleasure. So, we're going to, uh, what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll do a quick summary on the email and I'll send that out. I'll also send my, um, cell phone, my private cell phone information. Some of you guys already, y'all should all have it, but it's just in case I will just put it there. We'll meet up next time, next Sunday. I'll send that, I'll schedule that in Zoom and send those things out. Um, again, if anybody has any questions, if you want me to share each other emails on the email so we all can be connected, I can. I've been doing it separately because I'm trying to respect people's privacy, but it seems like we're all getting along and all that good stuff. So I can share if y'all agree. I can raise your hand, do a little clap symbol, whatever. Okay, share the email. All right. So I'll do that as well. Until next time, I guess this will be in our minds for next week. Or <laughs> whatever. Whole week. Whole week. Shemem Hotep. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello to the children for me. <laughs> <laughs>